everyone, and welcome to the final video in my series on hydroscedasticity. In the first two videos, we consider the intuition behind the problems, or that hydroscedasticity causes in linear regression, and some methods to solve them. I thought it would be nice to illustrate these with some examples, so you can see what's going on behind the scenes and develop the intuition further. If you want, you can also go back to the video on the methods we apply when facing hydroscedasticity and watch this video side by side with the other video. Alright, I told you when we have hydroscedasticity, the homoscedastic standard errors are off and we need to use robust standard errors. Let's see that work out in practice. Let's go back to a set of observations I already presented in our very first video of this series. On the left, we have the higher error variance of beans, while on the right, we have the higher error variance of the middle. Already just by looking at these pictures, um, I'd be much more confident in my regression estimates for the observations on the right than on the left. Now, let's put some numbers in that. Um, here I have a standard regression table uh, the two regressions on the net, uh, sorry, on the left, use non-robust standard errors. The ones on the right use robust standard errors. We can see that the non-robust standard errors are almost identical, even though we just concluded that the observations in one seem much more certain than the observations in the other. Did we do something wrong? No, we didn't. Um, it turns out, in the presence of heteroscedasticity, the standard standard errors, the non-heteroscedasticity robust standard errors, are not valid anymore. So, I also calculated the true standard errors here below, and we can actually see that the estimated non-robust standard errors are way off. Now, when we look at the two columns on the right, with robust standard errors, we can see that there's a meaningful difference between the two standard errors, just as our intuition told us. What's more, the estimated robust standard errors are also much closer to the real standard errors. Right? This showed us that, firstly, non robust standard errors will hide important differences. Secondly, robust standard errors solve the problem. Thirdly, at least theoretically, um, the actual standard errors might be smaller or larger, depending on your data. Uh, the last point, however, does have a small caveat. Uh, in most cases, robust standard errors will tend to be slightly bigger, unfortunately, if you're a applied researcher. Now let's take a look at weighted least squares. As I said before, weighted least squares has somewhat fallen out of favor, uh, but I still think it's nice to see uh, that it actually works. In the next section, I also talk about weighted least squares under misspecification model, uh, i.e. when you assume a linear model, the relationship actually isn't linear. Um, I use the same two sets of observations as before, um, here you've got a graph of them. All right, let's see what happens when we use OLS or WLS. Um, again, on the left, we have two regressions where the errors have high variance towards the ends, whereas the last two regressions have the high variance in the middle. The first column is always OLS, the second is weighted least squares. And lo and behold, in both cases, we managed to reduce the standard error with weighted least squares. Uh, but still, bear in mind the standard error on the right continues to be smaller than the standard error on the net. In the end, weighted least squares can only do so much. It is still constrained by the data you have. 
One other thing of note in this is that the estimators, uh, the estimates are still very similar, whether we use OLS or weighted least squares. Um, that's because there is an actual linear relationship that we estimate and we actually have a lot of observations. Okay, now let's look at what happens when the true relationship is no longer linear. All right, the final bit. What happens if we use weighted least squares, but the true relationship isn't linear? Here in this plot, uh, the true relationship is actually exponential. Actually, the relationship is exactly exponential. I have not added any noise or that sense, any, any actual error terms to the data. Um, but when we use OLS, we will still have an error term, which is called the misspecification error. That's because the true relationship isn't linear, so there will necessarily be parts where the line doesn't fit our actual process very well. Also, the misspecification errors mean we have heteroscedasticity necessarily. Uh, you can quickly check that yourself. So we do need to use robust standard errors in any case. Now, we can still put a line to a nonlinear relationship. Um, that line is still the line of best fit, i.e. it still minimizes the sum of squared errors given that we specify a linear relationship. We can do better if you specify a nonlinear relationship but for any linear relationship, this still does very well. So now we have a new regression table here. Uh, first column is an OLS regression with robust standard errors. The second column is weighted least squares. What's interesting in this case is that the estimates in the two regressions are so completely different. With the weights, due to the misspecification, um, we actually estimate something different now. We don't estimate the same line anymore, but we focus our estimation line on the area where we do worst in terms of misspecification error. Well, WLS, weighted least square standard errors, is still smaller here. Uh, but we're estimating something else. We estimate a different nine. That's one of the reasons that weighted least squares is no longer very popular nowadays, uh, because it's very hard to imagine that our relationship is exactly linear. And in that case, estimation by WLS is very hard to interpret. All right, we got a long way. I will just mention Please like and subscribe, I would highly appreciate it. But what are our key takeaways for today? Firstly, robust standard errors both accord with our own intuition in terms of where are we more confident or less confident. And they are a much better reflection of reality of our estimates. You should therefore always use robust standard errors. And as I said in my last video, the best type of standard errors are known as HC3, so try to use those. Secondly, weighted least squares can make our estimates more precise, though only so much. In the end, we are limited by the data we have. Thirdly, weighted least squares and generalized least squares in general are much harder to interpret when we fit a line in both the real relationship isn't the straight line. Because nowadays we think of OLS more as an approximation uh, than that the data is really actually exactly linear. We usually use OLS when it's robust standard errors and not weighted least squares. Now, if you like this video, I'd appreciate if you like, subscribe to stay up to date, maybe recommend it to some of your friends. It would be amazing. I put a lot of effort into those videos and it would be lovely to see many people enjoy them. I haven't yet decided what the next series will be about, so if you're interested in anything specific, do let me know. Thank you.